Hi, my name is Sophia, and I'm one of the co-directors of the film MS Slavic 7. And I'm Derek Campbell, and I'm the other co-director of MS Slavic 7. I mean, I'd appreciate your input. I'm interested in putting together some kind of exhibition of our work. Oh, like a family event? Something here? I should let you know it's a little expensive. I was thinking more of a public gallery. So this is because um, the film is about the formulation of thoughts. So researching and determining how you feel about certain things and exploring different angles. But it's also a film about self-actualization. You know, um, she's trying to find her voice, develop her voice, um, stand up to her family as well, who's saying like, what exactly like are you doing? Um, you can't just take all of these ideas and put them into motion. There's all of this red tape. Um, and I think that it's very much a film about someone whose thought process is coming into being, but I think Audrey herself is coming, you know, into herself and is really coming into her own. Um, and in Emma Slavic 7, she's looking to exhume these letters written by her great grandmother and to piece together her biography to, um, to honor her in the way that I think she believes she should be honored but also why, while I think like developing, um, I think her own objectives and trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life at the same time. So in terms of um, Audrey's motivation, I think in MS Slavic 7, we sort of had this two-pronged idea where one, we wanted to explore these letters, but we also wanted to explore this character further and I think Audrey has this um, real impulse to um, to understand the letters and to articulate herself, but as you can see, I think in these monologues um, within the film, she uh, feels kind of intense anxiety about expressing herself and like her inability to express herself. In terms of uh, speaking to how autobiographical Emma Slavic 7 is, um, there are points of it that certainly intersect with my family's history, but some were fabricated to create a narrative line. Um, so what happened is I was Googling and um, I came upon my great grandmother's um, poetry online and that's how I first came to engage with it um, and started making short films about her poems. Um, but then one day I also found that some of her letters um, were housed in an archive at Houghton Library at Harvard. So I got in touch with them, I got the scans and then the Polish consulate in Toronto um, very kindly uh, translated the letters for me. So Andrzej Sidlo, who was the um, consul general at the time, and his wife, uh, Kasia, and his 14-year-old daughter, Amelia, um, translated the letters uh, for me. And I discovered this beautiful relationship and love story between um, two people who had survived the war, were um, in their 60s. So my great-grandmother was living in Toronto and uh, Joseph Vitlin, um, who was a Pulitzer Prize winner and also almost nominated for a Nobel Prize for his book, Salt of the Earth, had this beautiful correspondence between the two of them. Um, and I was really excited about it, um, that discovery and I let Dara know about it. And she, she came up with this beautiful idea and structure about a young woman going to an archive and discovering these letters over the course of three days. Hi. I'm here to see some letters in the Joseph Vitlin correspondence and compositions. Have you been to Houghton Library before? Uh, no. And do you have a library? I think yeah, one thing that we have in common, I think, uh, within this character is that both Dara and I share this um, affinity with the fact that if we can't articulate ourselves or be seen and heard in terms of the way that we feel inside or if the message that we're trying to communicate isn't coming through to the other person. I think for both of us, that's you feel like super alien. <laughs> that's a devastating experience, and I yeah. think that that's something that I learned actually about both of us that mm -hmm. we both have in common. Mm -hmm. Because I went to filmmaking because I had a hard time public speaking, and I couldn't handle being in front of a group of people and losing control and not being able to deliver the message that I wanted to deliver. So that's why I went to filmmaking because 
there are so many variables that you're able to control to make sure that that message is being received and that's mm. that's a very satisfying thing for me yeah and something about the monologues but also something within this letter these letters is the idea um like that the effort to communicate you know it's not necessarily about effective communication but mm -hmm. the desire to try really hard to um explain how you feel in reaction to different materials and share that with another person because that is in fact like what is in these letters is mm -hmm. this very genuine attempt to uh kind of narrate for Zafia to narrate her experience and share it with this other person. And also another thing that's within the letters is to uh, support him and express care for him and encourage him in his work as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like care in terms of, you know, worrying about his health. Um, worrying about like where he's writing she she really wants Joseph Vitlin to go to the countryside because she believes that he will write his greatest work there that's actually something that you say yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> and I'm quoting the the film but as yeah. you were talking I was thinking about that line um, mm -hmm. that you said um, in your second monologue where you talk about the effort of everything to become language and I think that that is a very strong theme in the film you know it's the effort of everything to be like a full and whole human being, the effort of everything to be seen, to be heard, um, to communicate. And it's, it's, as you said, it's not actually about the message as a whole, but the effort to get there. Totally. Zafia talks a lot about birds in her poetry, birds basically being messengers. I think in terms of shooting this film, the biggest challenge um, was because we approached this film as an experiment. So Dara proposed this beautiful structure and we knew that it was going to be a, about a woman pouring over these letters over the course of three days. And we shot the film in sequence, um, but it didn't have a tight script. We just basically crafted situations, found actors, plotted out beats for every scene. Um, but we didn't necessarily have um, a tight script or game plan as to how we would execute it. We just had ideas and locations and we went out to do that together as a team. Um, I think sometimes it's about asking the film what it wants to be or seeing what that narrative wants to be instead of just forcing it into a preconceived box and of course that can be like a little bit terrifying because you kind of like have to let go of your expectations um, but I think finding the film together and finding, I think, the, the voice or like the spirit of the film together was challenging, but it was, it was really satisfying when we finally figured it out. Well, it wasn't your property. I mean, that is my property. So, I mean, I get to make the decisions about it. Whether you think it's stupid or uninteresting is kind of beside the point. Yeah, certainly when we were at Harvard, there was a level of uncanniness where we had, you know, made a fiction, we had simulated Harvard, but then through the experience of presenting the film at Berlin, um, the archivists at Harvard got wind of the film and then ended up inviting us um, to the university. And so there is just a very literal, like making a film calling something into reality and something actually having it and so this kind of i find it a very beautiful thing that um that your films aren't separate from your life and that you can make a fictional narrative that then becomes part of your actual biography and that you have this sort of your own experience of presenting the film and talking about the film ends up being kind of inseparable from the film itself, which I find very interesting. Yeah, because the film is about this character, Audrey, of kind of like coming into being and coming into herself. And I feel like in a way we kind of dreamed this reality, but then it shifted into something that became our reality. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, was, it was really amazing to be able to, to have that experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That is MS Slavic 7.